and welcome to our service of Holy Communion for this the third Sunday of the great 50 days of Easter. We're coming to you from Grace Episcopal Church in Glendora, California. My name is Susan Scranton, I am rector of the parish, and it is an honor to welcome you this morning. If you would like to download a service bulletin or learn a little bit more about us, I invite you to visit our website at www.graceglendora.org. We have a couple of announcements before we begin. Next Sunday, April 25th at 10 a.m., we have our Adopt-A-Lunch program. So please remember to bring the food that you have promised to bring or yourself to help pack lunches at 10 o'clock in Baxter Hall. On Tuesday, April 20th, we have our Vestry meeting via Zoom at 7 p.m. And as always, you're always welcome to come to our outdoor services that take place on our lawn at 10 a.m. And now join us for worship. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, 
whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard-pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace, and once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus stood among his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet and see it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And 
when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of fish, a broiled fish. He took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was evening on the first day of the week, the evening of the resurrection, and the disciples were gathered together, trembling in fear, and they were listening to one of them who had just come in say, The Lord has risen indeed, and he's appeared to Simon. It was yet another testimony from someone who had heard that Jesus was alive, that he was risen from the dead. Now, probably 12 hours earlier, the women had come back to that room to tell them that they had found the stone rolled away from the tomb. The tomb itself was empty. And there they encountered angels. And they said to them, Jesus is risen. He's not here. Remember what he told you? Don't you remember what he told you when you were in Galilee? That the Son of Man must be handed over. He must be crucified. And on the third day, he will rise again, as he promised. Well, it had been women who told him. Peter ran around just to take a look. and The tomb was empty. That's, that was for sure. But where was Jesus? And so he ran back and joined his fellow disciples in that upper room. As they were listening to this one man, two others came. And they said to them, you'll never believe this. But we saw Jesus as we were walking on the road to Emmaus. And we just had to get out of here. We had to get out of Dodge and, and do something different. As we started walking towards Emmaus. We were minding our own business, just chatting with one another. Yeah, we were sorrowful because we had such high hopes. And look what happened. And all of a sudden, another man came up to us. And he wanted to know what we were doing, what we were talking about. And we said to him, are you the only person on the planet that didn't know what happened to Jesus of Nazareth? How we'd hoped he would be the Messiah? And then he was crucified. And this gentleman listened. But then he went on and he began to talk to us. And he began to talk to us all about scripture. What was scripture we had heard. And he began to tell us what it meant. And it, it all sounded so familiar, so familiar, and our hearts began to burn. Well, this man kept going with us, and when we got to the village, we invited him to stay with us for dinner. You'll never guess what happened. All of a sudden, he took the bread, he broke the bread, he blessed it, and he gave it to us. We all knew what that meant. It was Jesus, then he was gone. But we're here to tell you, he is alive. We're telling you the truth. And the disciples listened, but they were still afraid. They were trembling in that upper room when suddenly Jesus appeared to them and said, peace be with you. Oh, did that scare them to death? They thought they were seeing a ghost. And Jesus said, wait, wait a minute, I am not a ghost. Why are you frightened? Look at my hands, look at my feet, it's me, touch me. Let me have something to eat. Ghost doesn't eat. If it sounds familiar, it should, because John told a similar story last week. It's Luke telling it this week. But it's important, because it tells us that Jesus met his disciples exactly where they needed to be met. Just as he met Thomas in his doubts, he met all the other disciples. They were emotionally, spiritually, and physically drained. 
They'd heard reports that Jesus had risen, but they hadn't seen themselves. They were full of doubts, questioning, was this real? Was it really happening? And I'm quite suspicious that they were also full of guilt. One of their own had betrayed him. Peter had denied him three times just after he said he would never deny him or leave him. They all abandoned him, except for the women. They couldn't even stay at the cross with them. And Jesus came amongst them and said, Peace be with you. In those four words, Jesus changed their lives forever. Because he essentially said, I'm alive. I forgive you. I love you. And I'm still going to commission you. Because you belong to me. And that's the message he gives to us too. We need to hear that message again and again. Jesus is alive. That's the essence of evangelism. And because he lives, we live. And he promises to be with us in all that we do. You see, the Easter story, it's not just a a once upon a time story. It's not history. It's not just a proclamation of moral values or Jesus and what he stands for. The Easter message is that Jesus is alive and well today. A number of years ago, when Richard Mao was president of Fuller Theological Seminary, he spoke about this in an interview. There were some other people that were part of the panel, and they were each asked the question as to the continuing influence of Jesus on our culture. One of the guests said that he gave a long, elaborate answer as to the staying power of the universal values of who Jesus was. When it came time for Mao, he turned to them and said, Jesus is alive. That's the influence. That's the be all and the end all. Jesus is alive. And that is the simplest statement of evangelism that I can think of. Because he lives, we live. And we're invited to live in the peace, that peace which surpasses all understanding that God gives us. That peace, that gift, because we know Jesus is with us always. There's a fairly well-known poem called Footprints in the Sand, and I think it says it all. One night I dreamed a dream. As I was walking across the beach with my Lord, across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that many times along the path of my life, especially at my lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most turbulent times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why when I needed you the most, you'd leave me. And he whispered to me, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you, never, ever, during your trials and testings. When you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. That is the hope and the promise of the resurrection. And you say, how do we know this? How do we meet the risen Lord ourselves today? And I suggest it's in the same manner that our disciples met him. We meet Jesus in the breaking of the bread. As we gather around the altar, or as we gather together in community, as we gather outside, we know him in the breaking of the bread. And every time I think of receiving communion, I think of Jesus as feeding me. We meet Jesus in the opening up of Scripture. We let the Holy Spirit speak to us. Sometimes the words will say something different each time we read them. Someone has to explain it to us. Scripture must be heard, digested. Prophets testify. Jesus was there. We'll meet him in the opening up of Scripture. We'll also meet Jesus in the hands and feet of those who are the Christ for us. 
Think about it for a moment, the image of hands and feet. The disciples recognized Jesus by looking at his hands and his feet. They identified him that way. And how often we identify people by their faces, do we not also look at their hands, which tell a story. Every time I give you communion, and you hold your hands out to me, there's something important that your hands say to me. Sometimes it's about joy, sometimes it's about pain, sometimes it's about reverence. But your hands tell me a story. They're hands that heal. They're hands that lead. Hands that lead our, our children, teaching them. Hands that have offered healing. You know, Jesus always touched when he healed. We offer Jesus' healings through our blessings, our hands, our hugs. Hands that have prepared a meal to share with others, to be there with those in need. And the same thing is true of our feet. Feet that have walked with us. Feet that have shared in joy and pain. Feet that have walked miles carrying the good news for ourselves, for the world. You see, we are witnesses to Jesus Christ. When people around the world look for the risen Christ, they look at us. They look at our hands and our feet and see what we have done, where we've gone. For we are the body of Christ. Amen. Please join me in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people for today are Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, praying especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, for John and Diane, our bishops, and for Susan and Jim, our priests, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray especially for those on our parish prayer list. Are there others? Almighty and eternal God, rule of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept our prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice unto God. subject to evil and death. You in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, 
drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask of your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of Would you please say the spiritual communion prayer with me? My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.